Every night at 7 p.m., without fail, I will sit my very large and voluptuous rear end on my couch and turn on the most recent episode of The Price is Right that I pre-recorded on my DVR because I am 70 years old. God damn it. Where's the select button? I can't see this. I also go to bed at 9 p.m. every night, have lower back pain, and feel like my life is slowly fading away from me with each passing day. So you could say that I identify with the average elder's experience quite a bit. It is safe to say that I have a special love in my heart for game shows. I'll watch pretty much anything. Well, not, not anything. The genre of game show and reality TV usually overlap, but to varying degrees. Using The Price is Right as an example, it is a game show through and through. The viewer is not meant to connect with the contestants' lives past the surface level. On a show like, let's say, The Traders, however, the lines are a bit more blurred. Yes, the contestants are competing for a prize, but they live together, develop bonds and relationships with one another, and we, the viewer, see a much more personal part of their lives as opposed to watching the contestants on, say, Wheel of Fortune. All right, George, you have one vow left. Category is things you turn on. First letter's an F, last letter's a T. Uh, let's do A. Can you put A on the board, please? Um, I think I'd like to solve the puzzle. Go ahead. That Ooh, sorry. The word we were looking for was faucet. Uh, what a shame. On the other end of the spectrum, the autism spectrum, a show like Love Island is a reality TV show down to the exact definition, which Miriam Webster's dictionary defines as, I'm just messing with you. God, come on. I'm not that bad of a essayist. <laughs> Although the contestants on Love Island do play some games, the entire show is based off of these people's real lives and relationships with one another. Reality TV is often hard to define in itself, although it's usually defined as television programming that features people, especially people who are not professional actors, dealing with real life situations or participating in contrived activities such as competitions. Reality TV can range from a show like that of Hell's Kitchen all the way to a show like The Kardashians. I think you and I can both agree that those two are very different from one another. Reality TV, while fun to watch, and the only thing that I've been able to bear opening my eyelids for in order to consume for the past couple of months, can often be taken to the extremes. People are cramped in close quarters for up to months at a time and forced to perform on camera 24 seven, all while competing in mentally and physically taxing games for money and sometimes even their lives. Originally, I was planning on making a reaction video to an episode of one of the game shows that we will be discussing this video, but I wanted to put a little twist on it. A nipple twist, if you will. Today, I will be taking you all through some of the craziest and darkest, darkest. reality TV shows that have ever been made, and why TV like this, although it is incredibly dangerous, will never stop being made. Reality TV, as seen in the name, is often advertised as something that is real, although it's anything but, except for in the rare and extremely disturbing cases that it is. During our short history in the universe, we humans have really made a name for ourselves as the top of the food chain and one of the cruelest predators to walk the earth. Worse than a grizzly bear, we're a man. Stop, don't scrub past this part of the video. Before we get into the meat and potatoes of this video, I wanna let you all know that this video is sponsored by me. That's right, I finally made a Patreon. If you wanna become a member, the link will be down below. If you don't know what Patreon is, it is a subscription-based platform for creators to post exclusive content for their fans. I have five different tiers on my Patreon, all varying in the benefits that they offer to you for exclusive content, but overall, the exclusive content that you'll be getting will be more personal, sort of behind the scenes, vlog type style, unedited stuff of what I'm working on on my YouTube or other platforms. Your name will get credited at the end of my videos and just a bunch of good stuff. So if you would like to support me over there, I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, let's just get into the video. I will be organizing the shows that I'm discussing in this video using the popular iceberg method. As we progress deeper down the iceberg and even into the depths, the level of degeneracy that each show displays will increase. Of course, I'm using my own arbitrary scale to rank these shows. So if you wanna let me know which one you thought was the most degenerate, please feel free to let me know down below. Although we all know what the most degenerate piece of media ever created is. Political debates. Can't wait to get my popcorn ready for that. Who do you think will die first from a stroke during the debate? <laughs> Drop a prediction down below. I'll be taking bets too in my private DMs, but don't tell the IRS that I'm doing that. Let's start off at the tip of the iceberg, wink, with a little bit of vanilla. Although you know that I like it 100% dark, wink. 
If you're an American, God bless America, you're probably aware of the popular talent show America's Got Talent, which I used to watch every year with my mom with a smile on my face until a friend in high school told me how it's basically just a sob story competition and now I can't look at it the same anymore. Hmm. America's Got Talent, the beloved competition for those with the best sob story, had a spin-off show announced in 2021, which was set to air in 2022, called America's Got Talent. Extreme. America's Got Talent, while usually harboring wannabe singers and uh, stand-up comedians, had quite a lot of stunt talent on there as well. This is what set it apart from the many, 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 many singing shows that aired every single year. We get it. You can sing! Now I want to see you free climb the Empire State Building like King Kong. Of course, even if you're a professional, when you're performing dangerous stunts on TV, things can go wrong. Accidents rarely would happen during the regular show's taping, though. America's Got Talent Extreme, however, had an entire premise set around people performing the most dangerous stunts possible. It was bound to fail. During a rehearsal for the show, escape artist, stunt performer, John Goodwin was left paralyzed. According to sources on the set of production, Goodwin was suspended 70 feet in the air in a straight jacket, hanging by his feet from a wire. Two cars were suspended on either side of him, swinging back and forth. The stunt required Goodwin to free himself and safely land on an air mattress before the cars hit him, but the vehicles made impact and exploded, sending Goodwin falling to the ground, according to production sources. And as of last year, John Goodwin even opened a lawsuit against NBC, alleging that lax safety standards on the show led to an accident that nearly killed him and left him a paraplegic. Obviously, he was a professional performing this stunt, but I don't think it's that far-fetched to say that reality competition shows sending around people doing the most dangerous stunts possible could lead people to risk their lives in order to win a cash prize. America's Got Talent Extreme only ran for one season and it hasn't been renewed. Jeez, <laughs> I wonder why. Cruelty, as you know and will continue to learn during this video, is a huge part of reality TV. I don't want to watch emotionally mature adults work through their pro 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 I don't want to watch emotionally mature adults work through their problems. Wah, ew, gross. <laughs> I want to watch people cry and break down on camera so that I can judge them. Okay, that story was boring. <sighs> I'm gonna snooze fast. Let's get into some more fucked up shit so that you don't click off this video. Okay, please stay with me. Moving down the iceberg, we are now breaching into the surface level with Superstar USA. Superstar USA was a singing competition that aired on WB in 2004. Or was it? Superstar USA was a spoof of American Idol where they had contestants audition for the show, believing that they were progressing through the competition because of their competence and talented singing. In reality, these contestants were anything but. The entire premise of Superstar USA was to trick contestants into competing for a grand prize that th would be rewarded to the worst singer. Thousands of singers auditioned, all believing that we were searching for America's best singer. But we're not. We're actually searching for America's worst singer. Superstar USA had seven episodes and only aired for one season. Jeez, I wonder why. <laughs> the judges claimed that they weren't just looking for bad singers, but they had to look for bad singers who believed that they were actually good. Then manipulate and gaslight them all the way into performing in front of a live audience for the finale of the show. Not only did they have to perform for the judges and a live audience multiple times over an arduous, what I believe was a several week long filming process, they also went through transformations in order to make them into superstars. And the hoax gets even bigger when they're given the superstar treatment. They'll receive image enhancements, work with vocal coaches, learn dance moves, face the media, and shop for expensive cars and multi-million dollar homes. This only exacerbated the manipulation that these contestants went through on the show. When asked about people who would find the show offensive, one of the producers said, and I quote, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Briggs, what do you say to people who think the show is cruel and offensive? I'd have to say, you. This was bad enough, but on top of this, like any early 2000s show, this same producer, Christopher Briggs, who was one of the judges al alongside Tone Locke and Vitamin C, would often make extremely sexual remarks to the female contestants on the show. I don't need to tell you how licious your booty is. The winner of the show, Jamie Foss, who was objectively a terrible singer, was a victim of this kind of mistreatment by Christopher throughout the show. There's not a bad angle. All right, so it's hard, isn't it, Briggs? Oh yeah, it's hard. I don't know if you know this, Jamie. Um, you have very large breasts. In your past two performances, I was so distracted by your physical assets. Isn't lying to people bad enough? I would love to give this guy the benefit of the doubt and say that he was playing a character, but even if he was, that's really not relevant. 
These women auditioned with the belief that this was a legitimate talent show and that the judges were legitimate judges. Satire is great. I do it all the time. But when you're doing it to unsuspecting victims who believe that it's real, it's just cruel, not funny. If someone tells you that your child died, human instinct tells us that we should believe them because why else would you say something so terrible? As the show progressed, the contestants would move through eliminations leading up to the grand finale. Throughout this process, they were flown to Hollywood, land of the rich home of the poor, where they were molded into superstars through media training, vocal, vocal training, training, and makeovers. In the second to last episode, the contestants performed in front of a live audience that they were led to believe were terminally ill people who were having a wish fulfilled by a charity. This video only gets worse. Keep that in mind. The Los Angeles Times reported the said organization as the Make-A-Wish Foundation, which later received an apology from the WB. In an interview with USA Today, executive producer Mike Fleece straightened out the details. First of all, it was me, but I did not say Make-A-Wish. I said, who, who's heart of the One Wish Foundation? And people raised their hands. There is no One Wind Wish Foundation. It was a prank on top of a prank. It was the only way to get it to work. The final three contestants were made up of Rosa, Mario, and the ultimate winner, Jamie. As I said before, they performed and were judged in front of a live audience. After Rosa was ultimately eliminated, Jamie and Mario were forced to perform a duet with one another for the final performance. As I said, Jamie Foss was the one who ended up winning. Although she was lied to, she did win $100,000 in the end, which should be good enough to pay for her therapy, I guess. Rosa and Mario also received consultation prizes, which is good. I guess. After the last episode, it was revealed to the contestants that they were lied to, with the final message of the show being, keep going, even if you fucking suck. The show, although being typical lowbrow US reality TV, is very interesting from a sociological point of view and says a lot about human psychology. A, most people are rarely objective and certainly not when it comes to themselves. B, most people are followers. If the majority says or believes something, most people don't question it and just go along. C, and in some cases, even when confronted with the truth, it is not a guarantee that they won't persist being unreasonable. Now we are reaching just below the surface level. The Chamber aired on Fox in 2002, with its concept centering around contestants being subjected to extreme temperatures. The players would enter a preliminary round before deciding who would be strapped to a saw-like contraption that would spin them around, albeit slowly, while getting as hot as 150 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Negative 20? Please. You Southerners are such puss- On top of this, contestants would also be tormented with electric shocks, hurricane winds, earthquake shakes, and oxygen deprivation. Tonight on NBC, we're airing a new game show called Life in Guantanamo, where contestants are tortured by US military agents for 12 days straight. Whoever can make it out alive will win $5. The chamber's tortures would only get worse as the contestant progressed through their trivia questions. D. Michael Douglas. D. Michael Douglas. Next up, we're gonna see how long our contestants can last in a microwave. Oops, sorry, looks like the answer was Michael Jordan. The player could voluntarily end the game by saying three simple words, end the chamber. But why would anyone do that? Even back then, times were tough with money. They always have been. I do almost anything for money. <laughs> Not that though. The contestants' vitals, such as blood pressure and heart rate, were also monitored, along with health experts on the site, but even this wasn't enough to prevent the worst from happening. Six episodes of the show were recorded, but only three aired. Not only were audiences outraged at the concept of the show, but there was actually a lawsuit from a former contestant, Scott Brown, that made people speculate about the real reason that the show was canceled. One contestant, Scott Brown, passed through all seven levels of the cold chamber and answered 20 questions correctly. He won $20,000, more than any other contestant on the show. After his game, however, he was hospitalized for hypothermia and sued Fox and the producers of the show. The lawsuit was settled out of court and Brown was awarded an additional $100,000 for compensation. Sportscaster Mac Matt Vesagarian was initially chosen to host, but objected to the show's content and quit, walking off set in disgust during a rehearsal. He was replaced by Rick Swartz, a sports radio host in Los Angeles. During production, an incident occurred when the chamber malfunctioned and briefly left a contestant trapped inside the hot chamber with crew members unable to release them from the set or turn off the heating effects for some moments. How long is that, huh? Though they were freed without injury, oh thank god. As we progress down the iceberg, we are now entering the upper depths. Are you hot? Yep, you can all see where this is going. ABC is the company responsible for producing this atrocity. 
that performed in February of 2003. 2003. <laughs> ABC is the company responsible for creating this monstrosity that performed in February of 2003. A month before I was born. Oh, how the time changes. <laughs> the concept of the show is simple, but not for the minds of the players who had to seek intense psychiatric care after competing on the show. Allegedly. 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 I, honestly, I'm not sure that they had to do that, but I don't doubt it. For the first rounds of the show, they filmed in four different regions in the U.S. called Hot Zones, where three judges and an entire room of people had to judge whether the contestants were hot or not. <sighs> I'm so done with humanity at this point. Listen, almost every reality TV show is about judging the way that people look. Love Island is basically just a best ass and tits competition at this point. But did you have to be so outright with it? <laughs> After the first rounds of competition, where the contestants were mostly spared from severe PTSD, by only needing to hear a simple hot or not by the host, they then moved on to a more up-close section of judging, where they were ranked by their faces, body, and sex appeal on scales of 1 through 10. In this round, the contestants had to strip down to just swimsuits while getting brutally ripped apart and sexualized by the judges. Open your mouth. Close up on the teeth, right side. Wider, 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 yeah, wider, wider. Wow, there is nothing more jarring than people who aren't even that hot making fun of other people's appearances. Throughout the show, players would be eliminated by the public and the judges until they ultimately decided the winner at the end, AKA the sexiest person in America who would apparently be push into superstardom after the show ended. Kind of like America's next top model, but somehow worse. Now, I'm not the kind of person who finds many people ugly simply because truthfully, I have altered my brain chemistry to the point where I'm just better than that. Seriously though, I think we should all try to move to a point where we stop consciously or unconsciously judging people based on their attractiveness to us personally, because it does affect how you treat people in real life. I think we can all agree that looks are not the only thing that matter in life. And even if they were, most, if not all, of the people who went on this show were quite attractive, actually. Hot. Hot. Hot! They're all hot! 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 Of course, all of these people consented to being on this show, but consent only goes so far. Moving on to the next level, we move into the mid-level of the iceberg with the show The Moment of Truth. You might have heard about the show from the likes of Cody Ko or other channels who made videos reacting to the absolute absurdity of it. The Moment of Truth aired in 2008 and actually ran for two seasons. What a success. Definitely better than the rest. The second season, however, never aired. And we'll be getting into why in just a second. Prior to the show, a contestant is asked questions by a polygraph machine. During the taping, without knowing the results of the polygraph test, the host would ask a few of these questions to the contestant again, who's playing the game on stage. If the contestant answered untruthfully during the taping, as determined by the polygraph test, then they would lose the money that they won during the show. They could stop at any time, but if they heard a question and then decided to bow out, they would lose the game. I'll tell you what, if they ever decide to remake the show and I get on it, don't ask me where I was January 6th. The questions that were asked on the show were extremely personal and mostly just cruel. They range from whether you cheated on your partner to whether you believed that your father had sexual relations with a minor. Not a note in this instance, Kendrick. A child. On the fifth episode, which aired on February 25th, 2008, contestant Lauren Clary truthfully admitted over the course of the play that she had sexual relationships with someone other than her husband. After truthfully admitting to these actions, with her mother staring furiously at her and her husband sitting with his head in his hands, she was eliminated for answering yes on the question of whether she believes she was a good person. The intro of this episode featured a disclaimer by host Mark L. Wahlberg, in which he claimed it was highly debated whether or not the episode should even be aired, and he was against it being aired, calling it the most uncomfortable situation he has ever been in on television. In what is often considered the forbidden, the forbidden episode, episode from season two, a contestant is asked her 21st question for a grand total of $500,000 if she answers truthfully. Now the question that she was asked. <laughs> Do you believe that your father, as an adult, has ever had sexual relations with a minor? Question 21. Do you believe your father, as an adult, has ever had sexual relations with a minor? Hey, hey. 
Melanie ended up answering yes to the question, to which the robotic speaker voice announced that her answer was truthful. Yes. That answer is true. Well, your dad may be a creep, but at least he's got half a million dollars. <laughs> All of that is already bad enough. But the real reason why this show is so far down on this iceberg is it because of an incident that happened outside of the taping of the show. Now, this incident happened on the Peruvian version of the show, not on the US version. Ruth Talia Saez Sanchez was asked, do you think your parents would be proud of you if they knew what you did for a living? For her first question on the show. At the time, Ruth's parents believed that she was a call center employee, but in hopes of winning a large cash prize, Ruth revealed that she was actually a nightclub hostess and had taken money in exchange for sex two times. Her answer was not the darkest part of this whole ordeal. It's not surprising that someone would admit to doing sex work in order to make a living. Ruth ended up winning 15,000 Peruvian soles, but what followed this taping was far worse than any question that she could have been asked. Eight weeks later, Ruth was found dead by the police with her boyfriend later admitting to her murder. Her family quickly refuted these claims and said it was at no fault of the show. The television program has absolutely nothing to do with it. Ruth's uncle, Freddy Sanchez Rojas stated, the host of the show, Beto Ortiz, also said, what they are doing is given an alibi to the defenders of a soulless criminal because they are taking away his responsibility by saying that television creates monsters. Whether or not the show had something to do with her death is up for you to decide, but I wouldn't doubt it, personally and allegedly. Finally, we have reached the bottom of the iceberg, but there's still one more section to cover after this. I have to say, I hope you're not eating right now, although you should know to never ingest food while watching one of my videos. I'll give you a moment to just Finish that, put it down. Go ahead, I'll wait. God, hurry the fuck up! The TV show Hurl premiered on the network G4 in 2008. Notice the years that these shows aired in? Yeah, exactly, post 9-11. What are they hiding? Again, the title of the show speaks for itself. In the show, contestants had to eat copious amounts of food and then engage in multiple different physical challenges designed to make them, well, hurl. In episode three of the show, the players had to eat 14 pounds, pounds of chicken pot pie and then endure being spun around in a gyroscope. A chicken pot pie is bad enough, but 14 pounds? It just shows you how impossible it is to handicap this contest. What the fuck? You know, a thousand years from now, if we're still here by then, probably not, people are going to uncover this footage and absolutely just projectile vomit. Or, you know, maybe they won't. Because I then, I think, um, Transhumanism will have turned us all into jellyfish in and out the same hole, you know? Wait, that's what... That's, <laughs> that's what throwing up already is! <laughs> oh, obviously, I'm not going to be showing any of the graphic footage for your sake and mine, and my wallet specifically, because I want money. But believe me when I say, you're better off not watching it. If the players can make it through these physical challenges while also eating the most amount of food out of all the other contestants, then they would win the grand prize of... $1,000! And the Iron Stomach Reward, yay! <laughs> sure, Jan. In another episode, the players had to swim laps in a pool after eating 20 pounds of ribs. Hey, give me 10 pounds of pasta and I'll show you a good time. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> the final episode is titled Clam Chowder. <laughs> you might think that after covering that show, we have reached peak degeneracy. But there is one more level to cover, the depths. The darkest pit of despair. Light does not reach here. Susunu Denpa Shonen. Susunu Denpa Shonen ran from 1998 to 2002 on the Nippon Network. In the show, contestants were practically tortured through games, such as two contestants stranded on an island who had to make a raft, spending four months trying to escape in one season, while others had to hitchhike from South Africa to Norway. What? <laughs> one season saw a contestant placed in a room with a TV to watch his favorite baseball team play each day. If the team won, he would receive food, but if the team lost, he wouldn't eat and the electricity would be shut off in the room with a losing streak meaning starvation. Now there's one season of the show that is the most infamous. It followed a man named Natsubi who chose to participate in Susanoo without knowing its concept. Natsubi was kept secluded in a tiny room, naked, with only magazines to live off of. Literally. He could only survive on his winnings from mail-in magazine sweepstakes. That went for clothing, food, and self-care items. Basically, anything you need to stay healthy and well. Producers convinced Nasubi to believe that he was self-recording his day-to-day -day experiences for further review, 
when in reality, most of his confided moments were broadcasted for the world to see and make fun of live. This show lasted 15 months, with up to 17 million viewers tuning in each week to watch. Nasubi isn't even this real man's name though. His real name is Tomoaki Hamatsu. Nasubi is actually the Japanese word for eggplant. Why would you call a man this? Well, the producers named him Nasubi since they had to use an eggplant to cover his genitals during the filming of the show. I cannot even fathom this level of human cruelty. Nasubi at times was forced to live off of raw rice and dog food while having no idea that the entire time he was on the show, he was being broadcasted to the entire country 24-7. Nasubi reached his goal after 335 days, having won enough items with a combined value of 1 million yen. Although he was led to believe that he had won a special trip for surviving the year, he was abruptly blindfolded by producers and moved to a new loca location, South Korea, where he would have to win enough earnings in order to get a flight back home to Japan. Nasubi was placed in yet another secluded apartment where he was asked to take off his clothes and instructed to enter more sweepstakes. After spending so long in the previous apartment, Nasubi ended up finding his way out of this apartment relatively quickly. Upon arriving back home in Japan to yet another apartment, Nasubi starts to strip off his clothes when suddenly the walls of the apartment collapse around him and it's revealed that he is in front of a live studio audience. Obviously, the amount of trauma that this would cause on a person is insane. Everything was harsh, and it was like hell back then, Nasubi told Style Koreyama. The hardest thing was not being able to see and talk with anyone. My mental condition was at its worst. I was like, why only me? Why do I have to do all these things? I'd rather die than feel like this. Although it seemed like I was having fun most of the time on the edited show, to me it was full of pain. Nasubi thankfully seems to have somewhat recovered from his whole experience, if you can even do that. In 2016, he achieved his goal of climbing Mount Everest. Now he has his own company and even a Hulu documentary was made about him called The Contestant. I'm gonna link Moist Critical's video about him down below if you'd like a more in-depth into the show and the cruelty behind it. After covering this entire list of, I mean, Got the worst things ever made, just straight up. <laughs> I have my own game show that I'd like to showcase to you all. I tried to create something that is more degenerate than anything I discuss in this video. Something that I'm very good at, actually. <laughs> May I present to you the Room of Truth. Welcome back to the world's most dangerous game show ever made, the Room of Truth. <laughs> Tonight's episode will reach new levels of suspense that no one has ever seen before. You might want to get your adult diapers ready because you might just happen to explosively shit yourself without even knowing until you stand up and your wet liquid diarrhea trickles down your legs. Time to meet our contestants, Maya and Adam. So how are you two feeling tonight? We're excited to be here. As you all know, Maya and Adam will be competing for $10 million tonight the largest prize ever seen in game show history. What would that kind of money mean to you two? We could finally pay for our three month old son's heart transplant. He's been in the ICU since birth and his heart is only the size of a raisin. That sounds tough. It is. Let's begin. Maya and Steven have decided that Steven will be entering the room of truth tonight. <sighs> Say your farewells to each other. It might be the last time. Aww. In the room of truth, Adam will be hooked up to a lie detector. He'll have to answer the questions that we have prepared for him honestly, or else the room will be flooded with large amounts of carbon dioxide. If Adam answers more than two questions incorrectly, then the air in the room will become lethal and Adam will suffocate and die. Let's begin. <sighs> Adam, have you ever covered your penis in peanut butter and then had your dog lick it off? <laughs> no, no! That answer is incorrect. Adam. Ooh, tough loss. Our next question. Adam, have you ever met an eight-year-old girl in a motel after chatting with her on chat websites for over three months? No, I swear no. That answer is incorrect. <gasps> Why am I even here? What role do I even play in this game? I didn't, I didn't swear I did I can't breathe. I'm just standing here! <laughs> what the fuck? Ah, oh, too bad! You guys gave it your best shot! Let's bring out our next two contestants who will put their hands up for the $10 million prize! 
They don't want you to win. They're using us as a human meat factory. They're killing us. They're... These shows or games, as the sadistic creators behind them like to refer to them as, all showcase the absolute bleakest part of humanity and the lengths that people will go to in order to make a quick buck. We all know that reality TV is bad for its contestants and even its viewers, yet we continue to watch. Hell, we've all seen Squid Game. The show that is literally about greed, capitalism, and exploitation of the lower class was literally turned into exactly what it was criticizing last year when a reality show was made based off of the show. It, it doesn't get more ironic than that. People, including me, will continue to tune in for these shows, despite criticizing them, because we all like watching people suffer to some degree. Not all of us, granted, but I definitely do. <laughs> I mean, can the new season of Big Brother come any sooner? Ugh. All right, that's it for me and that's it for this video. Let me know what you all thought about this video down below. I know this video is sort of uh, more of a niche topic, but I like it, I'm happy with the script, and I really hope you all liked it too. If you like this video, you can subscribe. I post comedy and commentary videos, so if that sounds like your thing, make sure to subscribe and turn the notification bell so you know when I post a video. I really, really hope you all enjoyed this video, but more importantly than that, I hope I see you in the next video. I better see you in the next video. Okay, bye. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up and make a statement. I don't ever slow up. No, I don't take shit. I got no love for the fakeness. If you wanna play tough and wanna hate this, I'll always show up.